<laughs> We're back here at 910. Uh, more than half of Americans say they need more sleep. This is according to a new poll from Gallup, which reported only a quarter of Americans are getting the recommended eight hours or more of sleep every night. Dr. Michael Howell is a professor of neurology and a sleep researcher at University of Minnesota here to break down the study and uh, to share some advice. Doctor, good to see you as always. It's great to see you both. We appreciate you coming by. Um, let's talk a little bit about this, this Gallup study. Uh, Megan, I both saw it in the news in the last couple days and like let's get Dr. Howell on and talk about it because there were some pretty interesting takeaways from it. Sure, it's a big it's a big survey from Gallup, very well respected uh, polling organization, which recognized that uh, as which most of us knew already, we're not sleeping well. Americans are not sleeping well, particularly American adults, mm -hmm. particularly women uh, are not sleeping particularly well, and this has consequences. Uh, it is related at least in part to stress, but if you ask me, I don't think that's the whole story. There's other factors at play here. Uh, everything from screen time to, you know, the the forces with our modern culture of living in a 24-hour day society. I also feel like part of what this study <clears throat> talked about is this need, right, for always doing more, for always trying to be better at our job so you're more connected mm -hmm. to the phone, right, for trying to make it to every kid's sporting event so that you're, you're just being pulled in so many different directions. So did it surprise you knowing that that's how we live, that these were the results? You no, know, and having to answer every email and yeah. respond to every text, and uh, it didn't surprise me at all. No. Okay. So I want to uh, Gallup polling since for the first time since 2001, a majority of U.S. adults, 57 percent say they'd feel better if they got more sleep. Forty two percent, they get it, say they get as much as they need. Mm -hmm. um, the figures when last measured in 2013, 56 percent of Americans got the sleep they needed and 43 percent did not. So, I mean, the, the numbers are right there. Clearly, people aren't sleeping enough. So a couple of decades ago, you could make the case that people just don't value sleep. They yeah. don't prioritize it. That's not true anymore. People want sleep. They really would like to. But their bodies, their lifestyles, their environment is just not letting them get a good night of sleep. What we're seeing out of this um, that really jumped out at us is young women are being impacted by, uh, by this uh, uh, disproportionately, I guess, compared to everybody else. What, what are the factors there? Right. So women have notoriously had more troubles with insomnia than men, just mm -hmm. on average. Of course, men can get insomnia, too. Uh, men more likely have sleep apnea. Women can have sleep apnea, but men are more likely to have sleep apnea. Women are more likely to have insomnia. And so as the, as the insomnia problem is getting worse, insomnia being just trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, yeah. it's not surprising that it's affecting women more. 36% of women versus 48% of men saying that they get the sleep they need. 36%. That's, I mean, that's not very many people getting uh, enough sleep. Yeah, that's, and those are our coworkers, those are our friends, family members, and they're sharing the road with us while we're driving, too. Boy, that's a whole other point, Something right? Something to think about. I like this one, too. In 2023, 53% of women report frequently experiencing stress compared to 45% men. Stress being a leading factor, too, for why so many people say they're not getting the eight-plus hours that they need. Right. Right. So stress is stress definitely. How do we change that? <laughs> what do we do? Right. I mean, the stress you know, levels aren't changing. The stress of being a parent, the stress of, of, of work, none of that's changing. So how do we tweak the stress? How do we put more of a focus on it and make it more of a priority? Well, my job as a sleep researcher is to try to help people sleep better, which will then help them deal with the stress more. So if you're not sleeping well, this is a this feeds on itself. Yeah, right. So if you're not sleeping well, the small, you know, three out of a 10 stress feels like a seven out of a 10 stress mm -hmm. when you didn't get a good night of sleep. So by helping people sleep better, our, our hope is that we're going to help their mental health. Are we still thinking uh, from your standpoint as somebody who does this for a living that eight hours is the benchmark? It's, See, that almost seems unrealistic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and, I, and I often don't always get eight hours myself. So yeah. it's, really, it's really what each individual person needs. Some people it's six, some people it's ten, uh, some it's less. Um, and so the, the trick is to find out not only what's the right amount of sleep, but what is the right timing. So if you're someone who has to get up early for a job and be on camera, for example, figuring out how to help one's body actually fall asleep earlier, because that isn't, that isn't always easy to do. Yeah, shift workers definitely have a difficult time <clears throat> of things, right? We have producers that come in at 10 o'clock at night and are going home at 6 in the morning and trying to get to bed right away, and that's a challenge. Does napping, if you nap for three hours at this time and then you go to bed for four hours, does that count as getting eight or seven hours of sleep? Or if you break it up and don't get it in one fell swoop, is it not the same? You can absolutely break it up. 
<clears throat> you want to be a good napper, though. You want to you want to lay down. You want to take a nap. You want to wake up feeling like you got a good, refreshing sleep. You don't want to wake up and feel like you don't know what planet you're on, um, which is unfortunately when you're when you're first trying to figure out how mm -hmm. to nap properly. That's often what happens. Okay. You <clears throat> talk about your work at the U of M and um, you know what it is you're kind of trying to drill down to. It sounds like unfortunately. Um, not sleeping over an extended period of time can be causing some cognitive issues that nobody wants to have to deal with. Right, thank you for asking, Chris. So the work we're doing right now is studying the relationship between insomnia, particularly among women, and Alzheimer's disease. We know that women are at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's than men, and it's not just because they live longer. Uh, we believe it's related, at least in part, to not sleeping well. When, when you sleep well, that's when your brain clears out toxins, and so if you're not clearing out the toxins, you can build up um, uh, proteins that cause Alzheimer's disease and other problems. The good news is, is that if you're not sleeping well, there are things you can do to help sleep better. Uh, and for any, anyone who may be interested, we have an ongoing research study right now, yeah. women 50 to 70, uh, who have uh, trouble with insomnia, who would be interested in participating in an imaging study, an MRI imaging study, just feel free to reach out to me at the university. Can I ask you the basics of insomnia? What classifies <clears throat> insomnia versus just not good sleep? That's a, it's a good question. So insomnia is, is the difficulty initiating and falling asleep, and this then leads to daytime consequences. So, if, you know, sometimes we'll have uh, trouble falling asleep, you know, after um, an argument or there's a, there's a stress in the household. Mm -hmm. That's normal. That's okay, as long as it doesn't become a chronic problem and as long as it doesn't lead to significant daytime consequences the next day. Let me ask you this, and this may sound insane, but in all the advances that we've seen in medicine, and we're talking about people living longer, and um, is there a future where you can take something, take a pill, that helps make up for the sleep that you weren't getting? Oh, well, so there's certainly sleeping medications out there right now. The problem is they all have kind of their own downsides to them. Uh, the trick is, is can we help create assist, can we help create something, whether or not it's a medication or a supplement or a behavioral strategy that helps people get the right amount of sleep they need, which is going to be different from myself. Yeah. Megan and you, it's You're all going to be a little different. Uh, like magic uh, yeah. pill yeah, that I, I was you take more, and then regenerates your body. That's the what inside. I was thinking. Oh, like, not right. something to help you sleep, but something that, like, this is the pill that, I mean, well, we're talking what, about crazy things <laughs> going on in, in advancements in medicine. I don't know. I was just curious. No, this is this is my life goal, which is to help people sleep better so that they have healthier brains, they avoid Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. That's yep. the focus of my research career. So yes, we are, we are trying, we're trying to drive to that point. Which would be great, yeah. but we'll keep you updated. I think you'll have, <laughs> <laughs> you got your work cut out for you. I appreciate what you're doing, because so, when yeah. you see someone who's dealt with Alzheimer's, it's really, really no, hard. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Thanks, Doctor. Good to see needed. you. See you. Uh, to learn more about volunteering for the university's sleep study we were just talking about, just head to minnesotalive.com.